Muscle mass is determined through a balance between protein synthesis and protein degradation. For instance, when the rate of protein synthesis exceeds the rate of protein degradation, in other words, when your muscle cells make more proteins than they break down, they increase in size, resulting in what's called muscle hypertrophy. So what determines the rate of protein synthesis in the muscle fiber? Well, we know that proteins are translated from messenger RNAs that are synthesized from DNAs. So in order to make more proteins, we need faster translation of mRNAs, or increased translational efficiency. And this faster translation is stimulated by a protein called eukaryotic translation initiator factor 4E, or EIF4E, and this protein binds to mRNAs and recruits them to ribosomes for protein synthesis. Protein translation is also increased by phosphorylation of S6 ribosomal protein, which is mediated by P70S6 kinase, or P70S6K. Both of these proteins are the major downstream effectors of a very important protein complex called uh, mTOR, a mammalian target of rapamycin co complex 1. mTOR complex 1 activates EIF4E by blocking its inhibitor, 4E uh, binding protein, or 4EBP1. mTOR complex, uh, complex 1 also stimulates the production of ribosomes, um, the process called ribosomal biogenesis, thereby increasing translational capacity. Now, what activates mTOR complex 1? Uh, let's say this is a cell membrane. One is a branch chain amino acid leucine. Insulin or insulin-like growth factor 1, clenbuterol, testosterone, a mechanical stretch induced by resistance exercise can all activate the mTOR pathway. Here, leucine enters the muscle cell through the amino acid transporter and activates the mTOR complex. This is why a leucine-rich diet or branched-chain amino acid supplements can be beneficial for muscle growth or prevent muscle loss. IGF-1 and clenbuterol, by binding to their receptors, can activate mTOR complex 1 through activation of uh, a protein called AKT, or protein kinase B. Well, clenbuterol is a drug that is not FDA approved in the U.S., but used by many sports athletes to preserve muscle mass while losing fat. Testosterone is a steroid hormone that passes through the lipid bilayer of the plasma membrane and bind to androgen receptors, which can either directly bind to DNA to initiate protein synthesis or indirectly activate the mTOR pathway. Mechanical stretch can also activate mTOR complex 1, therefore increasing protein synthesis. So what about protein degradation? FOXO transcription factors are very important mediators of muscle atrophy. And normally, AKT inhibits FOXO through direct phosphorylation, but when AKT activity is reduced, FOXO activity increases, and these FOXO transcription factors stimulate the expressions of muscle ring finger 1, MRF1, or atrogen 1 proteins involved in the ubiquitin proteasome pathway, and LC3 and BNIP3 that are involved in, in the autophagy lysosome pathways. Glucocorticoid receptor activation can also directly induce FOXO expression, and pro-inflammatory cytokines such as TNF-alpha can also increase the expression of these proteins through activation of NF-kappa B. In addition, myostatin and activin A through activin type 2 receptors phosphorylate SMAT23 proteins, which inhibit AKT activity and induce the expression of atrophy-related proteins. Animals and even humans that are deficient in this myostatin you can Google them right now, and you'll see that these myostatin-deficient animals are hypermuscular, with individual muscle groups growing to about twice the regular size. And currently, there are various myostatin inhibitors being developed for clinical applications, and I'll be discussing them in another video. In this lesson, we discussed some of the major pathways that regulate muscle protein synthesis and muscle protein breakdown.